In this lesson, we're going to continue to look at proportions. I remember from the last video, we introduced proportions and said that they are ratios or rates um, that are set equal to each other. Uh, or in other words, just fractions that are set equal to each other. And remember, we determined whether we actually had a proportion or not by checking to see whether the product of the means was equal to the product of the extremes. Um, but also we kind of had a, a shortcut that I think kind of sticks in our head a little better, and that is that we're going to check whether the cross products are equal. All right, so that's how we determine whether we had a proportion. Here we're going to try to figure out what an unknown number should be within that possible proportion in order to make it a proportion. So this first example says, what should x be so that x e over 4 equals 6 over 12 is a proportion? So this, this x here is what we call a variable. All right? We don't know what number it should be, um, but we're trying to figure that out so that we actually have a proportion. So we call that a variable, and what we're going to do here is just begin um, using the principle we learned from our last video that if you have a proportion, the cross products should be equal. Okay, so I should be able to take x times 12, and that should be equal to 4 times 6. All right, so we'll write that out. 12 times x equals 4 times 6. Okay, so um, a couple of things right off the bat. It's technically correct if I had written this, x times 12, um, because we know that we can multiply in any order we want. However, it's not considered the convention to put the variable first. So just remember, whenever you're taking a number times a variable, put the number first and the variable second, just like I did here. And then the other thing uh, I just want to address real quick is a vocabulary term. Anytime you have a number times a variable, that number is going to be referred to as the coefficient. All right, so 12 is our coefficient uh, in 12x. All right. Now we can look at even the original proportion here and probably tell what the answer should be. Notice 6 over 12 is 1 half and so if we're looking for a number that makes something over 4, 1 half, well, we know that the answer should be 2, because 2 over 4 is 1 half. Um, but let's, let's suppose for a second that that's not obvious to us, because we want to come up with a process that'll work for any proportion. So uh, let's go ahead and rewrite this, but we'll go ahead also and multiply our 4 and 6 here. So 4 times 6 is 24. Okay, and then even from here, you could probably tell, well, how do you make 12 times something equal 24? Well, times 12 by 2. So we can see from there that x should be 2. All right, but what's the general process for this? Well, there's really two ways we could do this problem. Um, I'll write one over here. One way is to multiply by the reciprocal of the coefficient on both sides. Okay, so first of all, just over on the side here, can we all agree that 12 is the same as 12 over 1? All right, we understand that little trick. And the reciprocal, or the flip, of 12 over 1 is 1 over 12. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 1 over 12 times the left side of that equation, and then on the right side, I will also multiply by 1 over 12. So I am allowed to multiply by whatever I want on both sides of my equation. Okay, kind of think of this like fractions, right? When, with fractions, you're allowed to multiply or divide on by the same thing on both top and bottom. Well, with an equation, you're allowed to multiply or divide by the same thing on both sides of the equation. And when you do that, you have not changed the solution. All right, so what do we have here? Well, 
if you have 1 over 12 times 12, we understand that you know 12 divided by 12 is 1, 12 divided by 12 is 1, so those just cancel, leaving us with 1 times x, which is, of course, just x, right? And then over here, uh, 12 divided by 12 is 1, 24 divided by 12 is 2, and so we end up with a 2 left on the right side here. So we get x equals 2. The other way you can go about this problem is using the same principle um, of you can multiply or divide by whatever you want on both sides of the equation. Here we'll divide, and so what we'll do is we will divide by the coefficient in front of the x. Because what that does is it allows those to cancel, leaving you with just the x that you want, and then that x is equal to 2. So either way, we get x is equal to 2 is our answer. Okay. All right, so let's take a look um, at the general steps for solving a proportion in general. So number one, set the cross products equal to each other. Okay, so that was this part right here. Right? So number one, set the cross products equal to each other. Number two says isolate the variable by either dividing by the coefficient in front of the x. Okay, that's what we did in the second way. Okay, that's what we did over here. Um, or by multiplying both sides of the both sides of the equation by the reciprocal of the coefficient. So that's where we multiply by 1 over 12, right? Remember, reciprocal means the flip. Right? So if you need a little reminder there, right? That means flip. All right, simplify the answer if possible, because what's going to happen is sometimes you'll get fraction answers, and of course you need to make sure your fraction answers are simplified. And then check your work. Um, I'm not going to show it here, but basically just plug your x value that you got in. So put a 2 in here, and then check the means and the extremes, or check the cross products. Make sure they're equal. All right, let's do one more example here. Um, it says, what should x be so that x over 21 equals 3 over 9? Now I want to show you a little trick that you can do in this problem that... Uh, that we could have done in the last problem but we we didn't and that is if you notice that one of the sides of your proportion has an unsimplified fraction go ahead and simplify it and that might make things a lot easier so up here I could have taken 6 twelfths and turn it in turn it into one half okay um, here of course I can divide the top and bottom by three right nothing wrong with that and so what that does is it gives me a new proportion of x over 21 equals 3 divided by 3 is 1, 9 divided by 3 is 3. And so that's kind of nice uh, because the smaller your numbers are, the easier the process is going to be. All right, so we'll go ahead and multiply or do our cross product. So 3 times x, uh, 1 times 21. And so that's going to give us 3x here is equal to 21. And then finally, um, we have to decide which of these two methods we want to use. And I'll just go ahead and say right now that I think the preferred method, if you have a whole number as a coefficient, is just to simply divide by that coefficient. All right, so what I'll do is divide the left side here by 3 and the right side by 3. I'll do that in a different color, though. So. Divide both sides by 3. And of course, what do you get at this point? Well, 3 divided by 3 is 1, right? So you just get an x. And then 21 divided by 3 is 7. So x is equal to 7. Now, one last thing I want to point out here is that as you're doing these problems, you should have each step rewritten out completely um, where you rewrite anything that you don't change. And the other thing I want you to do is line up all your equal signs just like I have in this example. And that'll really just help keep things very organized. So you should have this part of your work that's the algebra 
right, where you're just showing the algebraic steps you're taking. And then if you need any scratch work, like let's say these numbers were a little bit bigger and you had to do some multiplication, you had to do some division, you would do that separately over here. But line up those equal signs and that'll organize your work in such a way that'll really help you be more successful.